I, I've been very blessed uh, with Leon coming into our lives. It's very difficult to parent children that are a certain age and he was masterful the boys absolutely love him to this day he is their father and my daughter he is her father and we have been blessed again by the support of the church but also having some rudiments that I think we'll talk about a little bit later in terms of what we need to have for preparation before we embark on this situation. Okay. Amen. Miss Charlie, what's your backstory? Oh, my. I like that. <laughs> well, I guess I got a, a blended family. My husband passed away five years ago, but he came into my son in my life when he was six. And we got married, and we was married for 20 years. So basically, my husband is the only father that my son knows. And he came in kind of like you, just assumed the husband role and the father role. And I can truly say from the bottom of my heart, that was the best blessing that God could have ever given me was my husband. Yeah, looking at him, and he just smiled. He, he just really, smiled. He was really <laughs> <laughs> he okay. was really good. <laughs> like, we're going to move uh, right on past this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Miss Tracy, you have anything you want to add? Or you want us to skate on past? Uh, actually, it's it's a very little known secret, but I do have a blended family. Yes. I um, When I got married, I had a three-year-old daughter. And um, unfortunately, my ex-husband raised her all of her life. But it was never thought of. You know, and until you guys just said it, I didn't even think about it because she's now and she's going to get me because I know she's listening. 31 years old and we have three other daughters together. So we have four daughters. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go around the table again and I just want to talk to you all about uh, the blended and extended families. And I want to talk about the issues that can raise because I think a lot of our guests when they chose this listener's choice they want us to discuss about some of the issues that happens when you bring those families together you know long 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 ago when I was a young man there used to be the Brady Bunch out there and it talked about <laughs> here's a story so I want you all to kind of share your story uh, about that you got something to say baby yeah before we really in depth in that because I have okay. a lot of little announcements okay. just want to insert do what you got to do girl okay we did give our special shout out to the best pastor James C. Meeks in the Salem Baptist Church Amen. We hey, and we gotta say <laughs> something out to First Lady Jamel Meeks. Is an yes. awesome person. Love you, we love you, Jamel. Jamel. Love, love you. Jamel. Jamel. Yeah. But I do also want to go to a healing prayer section. Is going out to Loretta Cherry Amen. and Alberta Pace Mills. Eleanor Brown, the mother of our dear Tracy Brown Amen. in the studio. We're praying for recovery for her as well. And Eileen Adewale family, because a young co-worker of Tracy's mother just passed. Amen. So we need to lift them up in prayer. And I also want to go on to... Not to make any light of that, but to go on to a couple more announcements. Because once we get into this, I want to endeavor into okay, this well, a little longer. Do what you got to do. Okay. Next week's show, everyone, is about surviving in a marriage when a spouse cheats. It's going to be off the chain, so you're going to have to listen in. Amen. Um, shout outs is going out to Talise Cow and her mother. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did say that. Our birthday. Talise Cow and Cow Sweet Thing. Blanca Hippolito at Bank America. I hope you're listening, Yes, Blanca, Blanca. I hope you're listening because you said you are going to listen to this blended family. you going to listen and call in. LaShonda Howard. We don't need Olivia Pope as our gladiator because we We've have LaShonda Howard, Howard. <laughs> a.k.a. The Navigator. Amen. She helps to educate and enroll people in affordable health care plans. We have Tracy Brigham, Jasmine, and Red at Adorn Accessories. Amen. And this lady is so phenomenal. Sandra Ballinger, a graphic design by Sandra. She makes flyers. She create them with you in mind. And her address is, I have to give it to you, www.sandra.com. SandraBallinger.com and we have Sue, Miss Beautiful Sue, and she is with Sue Anderson, and she is with she's a weight loss coach. This girl, you have to see her. She's ultimately beautiful. We will have her on the show in the near future. And I believe that is my announcement for we could endeavor into other things. Right so now. as we were saying, tell us some about the issues that bringing those blended families together. When it first started out, it wasn't just something like, oh, blended family, we're just going to work together. I want some of you all to share with our guests about some of the issues that came about and how you were able to resolve those issues. So I'm not going to pick anyone. I just want someone to probably just jump 
jump in. So Mimi, you look like Mimi, Demetria, you seem like you want to jump in. Go ahead so now. I, I was going to speak on disciplining. Okay. Because when Pat, and, when Pat and I got married, we had four teenagers. Four teenagers that were sneaking out of the house. All of them together, they were blended. It was his kids and mine. They were, you know. So with him working nights and me being home most of the time with the kids, it was hard for his kids to listen to me discipline them. So he had to step in there. That was a hard role for him. Mm -hmm. That was a hard role for him to step in and tell his children, you have to do what she had to say. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, we've been married for 20 years, so he eventually got to that point, you know, where he had to tell his children, you have to listen to her. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was it was a hard role, but thank God we're here now. You know, so... Okay, now. Well, Ashley, how was it with you getting along with your new siblings in the household? Well, I was a baby, so it, I didn't think. I, so you're spoiled. Is that what you're just trying to say? Well, I mean, <laughs> let's be real. I was a baby, so I didn't know that there were problems until mm -hmm. I got older. I thought that everything, they were my brothers and sisters. That's all I knew. They took care of me when they went places. They bought me stuff just like they bought my brother stuff. It, it was never a, you're not my sister. I've never heard any of them ever say anything like that to me, so... I didn't know it was issues, but I was little. You see the contrast with that, Rick, is that Mimi was catching it, but her children wasn't. They blended well, which is a blessing, but it was it always that you're not my mama syndrome thing coming in. I don't have to listen to you type of thing. Well, you know, Brenda, I never really heard that you're not my mama. But the action show. It, it was the fact that I had teenagers. I knew that it, it was just four of them at the same time. <laughs> and he was working <laughs> nights, and it was trying, trust me, sneaking out the house, and I'm going around looking around in the neighborhood for these kids. It was driving me crazy. But, mm. you know, we got it together. He stepped in and did what he had to do. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. So, so, Joan, tell us a little bit about the uh, blended family you had and how some of the issues arise with that. Well, with our blended family, obviously they came to us through adoption, um, and they were little. They were babies when we when we got all of all of them at different you know stages of our life and they really didn't notice their race that they were different or their skin color was different until they were a little bit older um and then they started noticing things and every once in a while I'd get a comment like I wish there was somebody else in the family with my skin color now even though I have three they all have different skin tones. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about it. The open, the dialect, you know, began and the conversations began because I want them to be comfortable in their own skin because we just, we taught them and we raised them that God created all people, Amen. all different. And I, and I pointed out with the three girls, I said, if you'll look closely at the three older girls, their skin color isn't exactly the same, even though they're white. Their skin tones are very different. So, you know, and, and we, we believe in keeping open conversation in the home so that they are comfortable. And I read lots of books and <laughs> because I wanted to know. I wanted to know how other people were going to view us. Amen. And we have never, I think I can honestly say, we have never had a situation where someone openly condemned us for having a mixed and blended family. Now, I have... The children a couple years ago had their first experience with somebody condemning them for their race, but not because they were in a blended family. Amen. I have a question, if you don't mind, for sure. both of you guys. Um, with the different races in your family, how do you uh, go about keeping the culture alive? You know, a lot of times um, when you have different cultures and different um, nationalities and things in your family, it's difficult to bring that into the family especially if both parents are of the same race and the child is different. Right. Well, for us and our family specifically, I homeschooled the children for quite a while. So um, I encouraged them if they were interested. We're very Dutch. So <laughs> it's very different <laughs> than African-American. But we never made like a huge deal over our, our ethnic background, although we encouraged the kids to experience that so we would we would get books we'd go to the library and we'd look at that and encourage them on how other people live 
and how other people, like like a, an all African American family, how they do things differently than we do, or you know, because obviously even just in simple things like foods, you know, um, and well, the hair was the hair was a big deal because not for the boys, but for my daughter um, because I wanted to do it right because I was this white mama and that's what I said. She said white mama. I did. I am this white mama right. and I have right. this black baby and I want to make sure that I'm not being judged by the black race exactly. that they don't know that I don't know how to take care of mm-hmm. you. Right. You know what? You will be. Hey, I, that's what I like. See, that's However, what we bring. We bring in real people. Real, real talk. Yeah. However, I, I must say, see, Thank you for saying that, Miss Tracy, because <laughs> I have very I have quite a few black friends and they have no idea how to braid girls' hair. So I did not feel bad. I do know how to braid. <laughs> we all shook it our hand like we don't know how to braid. And so I, go ahead. I did get I did get mixed um, uh, recommendations for how to take care of the hair as well. So <laughs> yeah. I was really and we're, on my own. We're definitely going to come back to Joan because she's got a powerful story to tell us on another side. But I wanted you all to talk about yeah. how it was with your your, your extended family and how uh, it worked for you all. Uh, and so tell us a little bit about that and how the challenges that you all had. You had the three kids. You didn't have any. How did they respect him as the head of the household? They, uh, well, and I think it's important, too, that as we prepare ourselves as women prior to to getting married my sons were never told they were the head of the house i run my own house yeah. so when another man came in we we didn't we didn't have that as an issue mm-hmm. what we had is and and i think this is the reality and i think your callers a lot of them will understand the reality is the baby mama drama so what happened is the the ex who you know i'm trying to be a christian and trying Talk to do everything thoroughly right about that. okay so so i'm trying to do everything right and it was a very adversarial relationship. So he would tell the children, you know, you don't have to do what this person says. So we had to deal with that. So we got to the point, Leon and I would literally pray in the children's room before he, they came home. Amen. And so what we found is that that kind of convert, changed some of the, 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 the narrative when they came in because they acted differently with prayer once they came in that house. And we didn't say anything bad back, but it was, it was, it was rough there for a minute. Mm-hmm. And... Leon, I, I've, he is just masterful. My father, before he died, just thought, what an amazing man, because he never had to hit them. He'd make my little one do push-up, but he loves them to this day. <laughs> but they respected him because, again, all of this preparation starts before you bring a, a man into the home. Mm-hmm. My children were disciplined. They weren't angels, but, I mean, they knew, yes, sir, no, sir. They were respectful, and they knew that I loved them, and I didn't bring men over. A lot of times women bring, this is your uncle, this is your yes. n- That is part of the issue, too. So yes. they never seen a man. All they saw was I worked and went to church. Mm-hmm. So that helped, I think, you know, having that preparation in Christ before you before you do that. So Leon, add on to that for us. Well, I think um, what came to us was that um, we had to put up a standard in our family. We couldn't try to um, um, control things in somebody else's household. So we couldn't control what was going on when the kids went away for the weekend. We really control what came on in our, our, our household. So it, it came to the point where um, we noticed also that when you get when you become a step parent. And you marry a, a man or woman who has their own children. You can't come in with great expectations that you're going to just come in and everything's going to work together so fast. You have to be able to learn how to love the spouse. And the children will respect, respect you how you treat their mother, how you treat their husband, and how you listen to them and support them and, and always um, encourage them. And eventually things will start coming together. Um, you're not going to always be called um, mama or daddy. You may be called um, Mr. Leon or Mrs. Brenda or Mrs. Mm-hmm. Mr. Rick. You may be called that. <laughs> but you have to understand that you are building up that child, and sooner or later that child is going to go out the house. And your job is to make sure that that child goes out the house as a respectful person and not have so many drama in their family. Amen. And we got about two minutes. We're going to come back to this. But I just want, uh, Charlie, if you could just add something real quick to some of the relationships, um, some of the issues that you had with the blended extended families. And then we're going to uh, come back. But can you give me just some issues that you may have had with that? Uh, yes, real quickly. My son was the boy. 
And so when my husband came into the house, he wanted to flex his little muscles. <laughs> and my, and my husband up. said, okay. And he was very, very polite. He says, okay, I hear you. But this is how we're going to do it. We are going to have a family discussion. And so we.